I'm going to talk to you a bit about the mapping. So this is a cephalic vein of the patient, the uh, vein that we usually want to have uh, to use for the fistula at the level of patient's uh, arm. This is a very good caliber vein. You can appreciate here it's about uh, 4 to 5 millimeters. Uh, and at this level, you will see the deep communicating going down and coming to meet the proximal radial artery right at this level. So this is the anatomical configuration that we're taking advantage of. And I'm going to perform a puncture of the cephalic vein a bit north uh, from the takeoff of the deep communicating vein. So what you see at this level is that my needle, the needle tip is already into the vein. And then I will move slowly down. Imagine these are the uh, CD scan with the probe uh, of the ultrasound going down and following with a needle tip, which is a necrogenic needle tip. So I'm following down. I'm tracking the needle down. And I make sure that the tip of the needle stays always in the middle of my screen. So I don't touch the vessel wall. I don't do any perforation, any hematoma, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trigger any uh, spasm. So with this technique, very fast and easy, I will reach just in front of the radial artery, and I will start pushing against the radial artery. I see that I'm almost ready to enter. I'm gonna switch to longitudinal view, and I'm gonna push and enter to the radial artery. So I have pulsatile flow right here. You can appreciate the pulsatile flow. So I'm into the artery. I'm going to switch to longitudinal view again. My resident will push the wire into the radial artery. It will go in without any resistance. Perfect. So the resident will tell me that there is no resistance, which is um, uh, something very important to make sure that we are uh, in the right track. I will go down with the ultrasound, and we can see here that um, needle, uh, the guide wire, the O21 guide wire, guide wire is at the radial artery down to the wrist. Then we will take the needle off. We'll put uh, six uh, French uh, uh, terum of slender sheath, which is a radial artery sheath with uh, six French internal diameter and five French external diameter, an excellent sheath. So now uh, we are seeing the sheath uh, at the level that is entering the artery, right there. You can appreciate the artery and the sheath going in at this level. So what we're going to do at this point is um, put the device in. And as you've noticed, and this is always, almost always the case, the vein is coming superior and lateral to the artery in a position, let's say, about 1 to 2 o'clock. And we will try to do to give this orientation to the device. So th here the tip of the device is in. So then my resident will pull the shift back. Perfect. We're going to pull the device back. And at some point, we're going to meet some resistance, which is when the device is grabbing the the anterior part, the superior part of the artery. And you can appreciate that I'm pulling on the artery at this level. So then I'm going to close the device. I'm going to ask uh, my nurse to activate. So you can uh, see the device during the tissue fusion, creating the anastomosis at this point. And when the distance is uh, zero, after the first cycle, I'm going to start applying some uh, very light uh, tension to Sebon. Stop. I will apply some tension and take the catheter out. And you can appreciate the elliptical shape of the anastomosis that is already created there. Right there. Uh, so uh, at this point, we're going to put the balloon in because, as you can appreciate, the lumen is a bit narrow in the anastomosis uh, because of the small profile of the device. It's kind of small. We will enter just a bit into the artery in order to be efficient with uh, 
angioplasty of the anastomosis. You can see that uh, it's a short balloon, it's a five by two balloon, and you see that the posterior part of the balloon is just in front of the sheath, and the balloon is just entering the artery at this level. I'm going to take the balloon off at this point, and uh, you know, you can appreciate that there is some definitely great fistula flow, no doubt, and I'm going to put this on the cephalic vein, even though you see that I have great systole diastolic flow in the cephalic vein, even though I have my sheath in, and even though we have, may have some spasm. So you can see great systole diastolic flow Doppler again. I have a great thrill. I have a great thrill. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to measure the flow for you. So we have 469 of flow right at this point. Uh, and the procedure is done.